Yeah, it was uh, it was funny. Um, well, I, I, you know, Chris is the main reason that you know I got hired uh, in WCW, and then um, they uh, pretty much sent out my contract and hadn't seen me work yet, and they wanted me to bring somebody down whenever they seen me perform. And uh, Shane Helms went with me, and they hired Shane too. Uh, whenever we got down there and wrestled, um, Shane ended up getting hired. But yeah, man, like uh, Jimmy Hart, you know, like we, me, Shane Helms, Christian York, and Joy Matthews, like we were the Bad Street Boys in Music City Wrestling, which was right before WCW. Like we were out there, you know, pretty much every weekend uh, or, you know, a couple times a month at least uh, working for Music City Wrestling. We had just such a good following out there. And our, you know, like the whole boy band type thing was really over out there. And, uh, you know, I don't know if, that was something because I know that Chris Canyon, I know WCW was watching Music City Wrestling because whenever I called Chris Canyon uh, to ask him, you know, like, hey, how can I get involved in this cruiserweight action that's going on? Um, he pretty much was like, well, I know who you are. I've seen you on, you know, I've seen you Music City Wrestling. And uh, he already had an idea who I was. So I know that that was being seen by WCW at the time. So after, after we got hired and they hired the 21 cruiserweights, they ended up pretty much firing my all of them except I think uh, me and Shane and uh, I think uh, Jimmy Yang because uh, he was down there and um, Jamie Noble and there might have been a couple more that kept their job but we were pretty much the, at, at one point once that I guess the idea for the Cruiserweight show got scrapped um, you know they were like hey we want you guys to go to the power plant and like dude I, I wanted nothing to do with that power plant like, I was, you know, me and Shane, like, we'd already been wrestling forever. And, you know, like, our gig in Music City, like, we were making, you know, a little bit of change there. You know, nothing like we were making in WCW. But, you know, we felt like we were finally making a stamp, like, on national TV with Music City Wrestling. And, you know, whenever they were like, go to the power plant, like, we are like, okay, that's cool. You know, we'll go for a, a week or two. And um, I just remember, like, like, I, I didn't mind going for a week or two, but my, at the time, my dad, he was a paraplegic, and I was kind of helping, you know, I guess pay for, you know, the care for my dad and helping out with that with my mom whenever I was home. And, uh, you know, there was no way that I wanted to move to Atlanta or anything. And me and Shane, we, uh, we actually had this game plan to uh, go in and talk to Paul Orndorff, and uh, we were – We'd already talked about it too. We're like, man, we've heard he's crazy. Like, you know, he's probably got guns and knives in his drawer, but we got to go in here and let him know that, you know, we don't want to be here. So we went into Paul Orndorff and we we're like, hey, um, you know, we've been wrestling for a while, which was probably the wrong thing to do. We probably didn't make the right decision by doing it. And we're like, you know, we we pretty much, we don't want to be in the power plant because I've got hurt too down the power plant by somebody that just shouldn't have been in the ring, I guess, at that point with me. Just they were real green. And I, I'd got a concussion down there. And I was there for a week. And it was just, uh, I don't know, it was just a lot of wear and tear on my body. And I just didn't, I didn't think I needed to keep doing that because it, it just, it was de- digressing me rather than, you know, putting me in the right direction. Long story short, we went into Paul Orndorff and we were like, hey, uh, basically we don't want to be here. And we were expecting him like to pull a knife or something crazy or <laughs> try to fight it. Because I was like, Shane, if this happens, man, if this goes down, like, I hope you got my back. Shane's like, you better have my back. So, like, we were, you know, we had this plan, like, Paul's probably going to try to kill us. But Paul was like, well, I don't know why you guys are here anyway. You guys are awesome. And basically put us over. But then whenever we walked out of the office, like, from what I hear, like, we were put on the to-be-fired list immediately. <laughs> so, hmm. um, <clears throat> you know, that whole political thing probably had a little uh, play right there. So they were going to fire us. And then – uh Basically, Jimmy Hart scooped in. He had this idea for three count. Um, you know, I don't know where it come from. So it was just a thought. But at the time, I think Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake were hot. And Jimmy, you know, he, he wanted to really use this and record serious music and put it out like, you know, big, I guess, uh, pop stars. And, um, you know, that's how it kind of happened. We went in, we recorded our music. Jimmy got behind it. And then it turned into, you know, pretty much people like we were some i guess some of the most over hills on the show because the people hate us especially we look so young and then singing that horrible music like they uh they put us in a good spot though 
very funny and obviously got a huge amount of heel heat. The theme song, the dancing, the the singing, you know, all that stuff. It was just kind of like the, the perfect storm, especially with you and Shane being great workers and throw Evan Courageous in the mix. It just worked and the fans hated it. Did you enjoy kind of playing that role? Did, did you think that maybe you could be doing something, you know, maybe better or something else? Or did you like the fact that it was kind of like, uh, you know, almost like tongue in cheek, like, oh, we're a boy band, but, you know, we're really out here getting the most heat of anybody on the card? Yeah, after we got going and, you know, like, because, you know, I knew, I, I don't know, man, like, I just, the rest of the crowd, like, I knew it was going to be hard to kind of win them over with the singing and shit. But, once we started, you know, going out there and getting heat and they started booking it like that, like, I, I really liked it. I thought it was cool because, you know, it, it, I mean, Arn and like Arn Anderson, like, I love that dude to death. So he, man, he used us to, I guess, to our max potential, like in that, being in that spot. Like, I mean, he would send us out to open the show. He'd send us out right before intermission, right after intermission. And then they'd put us on and, you know, would come out around the sim right before the main event and like oh, you guys want to hear it one last time and by that point <laughs> they're throwing i mean we're using our Oof. green circles as shields they're throwing fucking m ms and batteries and like just whatever they could throw at us at uh, drink bottles like you'd be getting the heads all kind of stuff and then all of a sudden like you know sid would just slowly walk down the aisle and you know big ass sid people just they see him creeping up behind us and like you know they'd start going nuts like the people loved that because they knew we were just about to get destroyed, and then you know he'd slide in and then just stand behind us, and you know, we're like, yeah, finally we you guys would get it, you know, we knew you love us, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Then turn around and obviously like Sid would just beat our ass, but the people loved it, man. Like you know, people love to see a good bad guy get their butt kicked, and uh, you know Arn he was on top of it, man. Arn he's like I said, man, that dude, I got so much respect for him, like just for what he did for me.